to turn it on? Can you hear me? Yep. Cool. Before we get started, let's um, pray. Holy God, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank you that I'm in this position with people who are a lot like me. The world looks at them and says, what do you know about holy things? But yet you call each of us. I thank you for your love that is constantly raining down on us. I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. And I thank you for a love that never quits us and never runs, but always stays. I thank you that you continue to call to us and you continue to try to work with us and through us, even when we try to stop everything in its tracks. Here's my heart, God. Today, speak what's true. Everything else, we leave it at the door. We bring ourselves to you to be in your presence for you to speak to us. So let that happen here today. Let your spirit be present. Let every heart get what they need. Bless these people. We thank you for these things. In your many names, amen. amen. So two weeks ago, I picked up a book by Dr. James Cone called God of the Oppressed. It had been assigned reading for a class that I had done a year or so ago. And I picked it up for the second time and I opened it up and I didn't get past the first page of the introduction. Because at the top of that page, there was a poem, not by Dr. Cone, but by someone else. And it says this, speak the truth to the people, talk sense to the people. Free them with honesty. Free the people with love and courage. And that one line, speak the truth to the people, has been like right here. You know how that happens? So two weeks later, can't get away from speak the truth to the people. And even though I know there's no point in arguing with God and saying, no, I'm not going to talk about these things. I also know that me being me, I'm going to dig in and say, no, God, I don't want to talk about that. Pick another topic. So today we're talking about truth. And it's another little word, kind of like love, but it has such huge implications. Like it's a little word, but it's big when we apply it to our lives. So speak the truth to the people. And does that apply to just preachers? Or does it apply to everybody? So let's start in Ephesians chapter 4. And I kind of jump around starting with verse 15. And again, this is the message version. God wants us to grow up. To know the whole truth. And tell it in love. Like Christ in everything. God wants us to grow up. To know the whole truth. When you go to court, what you say? I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. God wants us to know the whole truth and to tell it in love. Then skip to verse 25. What this adds up to is this. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Verse 29. Say only what helps, making each word a gift. Verses 31 and 32. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another. Sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. God wants us to grow up and to tell the truth and the whole truth. So that was another, Christy, we're going to talk about it. Come on. It was 
was just a poem, God. We ain't got to talk about it. Christy, we're going to talk about it, God. It was just a poem. We don't have to talk about it. God's like, then how come it ain't letting you be? Well, because you ain't letting me be. <laughs> Speak the truth to the people. Speaking the truth to people is sometimes hard. Because sometimes people don't want to hear what you have to say. Sometimes people aren't ready for what Rock, the, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson would do. Layeth the smacketh down. Hmm. Sometimes people don't want to stand in those places where holy begins to go, look, I'm going to need you to do this thing. Or, hey, I'm going to need you to stop doing this thing. Standing in those moments can, can be scary. So speaking the truth can sometimes also be very, very scary. So I did my thing that I always do. I argue with God. God, I don't want to talk about it. So then Friday night, something pops into the email account. It was like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning when I saw it. So I stayed awake and read it. Because the, the intro, the email to me says, I think this article is about your church. I want to know what happened. I'm like an article about our church. What? So I read it. And it's actually an academic paper. And it happened probably around 2009 ish, somewhere in there. It was before 2012. Some of us weren't there then. Because, see, I was back then, I was like a drive by person. I drive by, stick my toe in, nope, the water ain't right. And I leave. <laughs> and then I drive by, stick the other toe. Nope, it still ain't right. I'm out. So I was like a ping pong ball, a yo-yo, back and forth, back and forth. So I wasn't really there consistently, so I didn't experience what this article was about. But as I'm reading the article, I'm going, oh my Lord, what is this? Who, who does this? Who says these things? Because in the article, see, normally when you're at a paper for school, you're proving a point, right? So you start off by saying, this is what I believe to be true, and then your paper has to kind of support why you believe it. So what he believed to be true, the person that wrote the paper, what, well, what they believed to be true, was that in certain communities, even in oppressed communities, there will be a power struggle. And the oppressed community will divide. So that was his theory, their theory. They go in, they join the church, not join it as a member, but start participating in everything, and they're there. So in this paper, there are quotes, direct quotes, from people that were in the church, men that were in the church. And the first one that made my stomach hurt was accredited to the pastor, and no names are named. Very briefly gives you little sketches of what people might look like. So it's a white pastor. So I knew that. And I read the quote, and I get sick. The quote was that women shouldn't be in leadership. These lesbians, this is going to be a direct quote, so if you were there during that time, forgive me. These lesbians are too much drama. They're too emotional. We need to get them under control. Huh. Okay, then. Then I keep reading, and then there's another quote. They had a, apparently an all-male Bible study, and they had a session, and one of the topics was, again, women's place in the church. Now, I need to just step back for a minute, because the truth is that was an LGBTQ church. That was MCC already. So what were they supposed to be doing? Everybody was supposed to be in that thing together. Everybody was supposed to be building community. Everybody was supposed to be doing what they were called to do. And we weren't supposed to be getting behind closed doors without a part of the group and go, you know, they're just too emotional. They shouldn't be in leadership. We need to get them under control. Then there was another quote. And this quote, whew, this quote was, men are called to be the financial and spiritual leaders of this church. Which is great. I'm 
all for anybody jumping up and doing their part. I don't care if you're male, female, ain't identifying as either. I don't care. Because the truth is it takes everybody. Interestingly, in the paper, the person writing the paper chose to point out the financial records do not support the argument that this person made. The financial records indicate that the women contribute more financially than the men. Then there was a graph in the article. And it showed you the number of people that were in that church when this pastor arrived. 100. Then it showed you the numbers after one year under this pastor's leadership. 48. Mm. 48. How you lead people matters. What you say to people matters. What you say about people matters. Let's take it even further. The Episcopals, just recently, what happened? They go, we're not using male pronouns for God anymore. And then what happened? Everybody had a fit. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people had a fit. Why does it matter? Why does it matter if God is male or female, and why do you feel the need to make me call God what you call God? Why? Is that in there? Does it say I got to do exactly what you do? No, you know what it tells me I have to do? It tells me I have to follow Jesus, that Jesus is the example. That was the first verse. Amen. Everything like Jesus. That's right. Jesus is the example. Not my daddy, not my granddaddy, not my granny, not my grandma, not my mama. Jesus. Mm. Marcy's not my example. I'm not who you follow. If you follow me, you're probably going to get messed up. <laughs> because I can get myself in a whole heap of trouble. I might be getting myself in trouble right now. But you know what? Ash, click that slide for me. Sometimes you got to speak the truth even if your voice shakes. Hmm. Even if you know the things you say are going to upset people. Mm -hmm. If it's the truth and God put it here and you're supposed to share it, then you have to share it even if you're scared to death. Right. And I told Sherry I put on the wrong shoes. <laughs> because when you... When you say things that upset people, you probably shouldn't wear flip-flops. You should probably have on tennis shoes so that you can run faster. Yeah. But what I'll do is I'll kick them off and leave them. And I'll be gone. We take the Bible and we debate it. We, we want to shred it to pieces. Well, God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and that's it. We're done. And then this other group of people, wait, <laughs> hold up, I got questions. Then you have the people who want to argue about what a woman's place is. And they want to quote Paul. Sit down and be quiet. That's your place. Hmm. Well, we don't mess that one up. So if y'all want to abide by that one, we're going to have to change some things. Because mm -hmm. we messed up. And so then there are other people that will point and go, you do realize that this is an, it's a translation of an interpretation of another translation. Mm -hmm. And you do realize that the people that were doing the translating yeah. were people. Uh -huh. They were human. Uh -huh. That means they could mess it up. That's right. That means they could say, oh, well, that mm -hmm. A shouldn't be on the end of that. I'm going to change that. It's an E. Mm -hmm. You speak another language. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you change that little thing on the end, the whole meaning can change, right? That's right. I mean, it goes from one to the other just by changing the, wait, A to E or something. Anyway, doesn't matter. Point is, the point is, people, people did this. People put it on paper for you. Right. Every translation you can get your hands on, a person translated it. That's right. So when a person wants to argue with me about this, well, I get a little tense. Hmm. Because the truth is, I look at that and I go, it's a God. That's right. That's it. It's a God. That's it. Amen. I try to make sure that I'm a good person. And how do I decide what a good person is? I go and I read Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, love everybody. Yeah. That's in, you want me to tell you where it's at? You need it? That's in John chapter 8. Nope, John chapter 13. Love one another. Jesus was boring as all get out because all he ever went around talking about was you got to love everybody. <laughs> kind of like me. Love everybody. But again, we want to take it and we, then we want to apply it to certain people. So only men, if we believe the article and believe some groups that are running their mouths right now, only men 
can enjoy the full love of God. Mm -hmm. Only men can understand the true meaning of holy. So Travis and our two visitors and Kay, y'all good. The rest of us in trouble. <laughs> we, don't get, we don't get to bask in it the way you do, apparently, if we listen to that. But there's another time when Jesus was talking. And that is John chapter 8. And in John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus says to the people, if you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth. And the truth will set you free. Now I'm going to read this again, and you tell me what words is missing. If you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure then you will experience for yourselves the truth. And the truth will set you free. Do you see what's missing? It does not say, men. my man, if you stick with this, hmm. you my disciples, women, go, go cook something. <laughs> that ain't in there. Jesus is talking to the crowd. The crowd had both men and women in it. It had children in it. It had religious leaders in it. It had spies in it. Because, you know, intrigue and drama, all in here. But my favorite part is, if you do this, follow my teachings, if you do this, then you will experience for yourself. That means Christy ain't got to tell you who holy is, even though you're female and about to birth a baby. You can know all on your own, because holy can go smack. This is who I am. This is what I want to share with you. You don't need nobody else telling you I'm here. Doesn't matter if you're male, female, non-binary, none of it matters. Doesn't matter if you're LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. None of that matters. <laughs> what matters is your heart going, God, here I am. Speak what's true. Uh -huh. Tell me what it means to follow you. That's right. And I will follow. That's right. Tell me what it means for me to follow you. I don't want to follow you the way Rebecca follows you. Yeah. I don't want to follow you the way Kay follows you. Uh -huh. I want to follow you the way you call me to follow you. Preach now here's the bad news right. for a lot of That's us. Right. Amen. God don't call you the way God called your granny, mm -hmm. your mama, right. your daddy, yeah. your auntie, your uncle. Yeah. It ain't the same. Uh -huh. You were called because you are called. Yeah. And what you're supposed to do is different than what they were supposed to do. Right. The only connection between the two callings is this. Love everybody. Uh -huh. Seek me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love everybody and seek me. Your walk is not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Your experience is not going to be the same. Because you are not the same. You are unique. It says it. You are wonderfully, uniquely made. And then people like to look those up when I say them I'm like that. My version of the Bible don't say it that way. Hmm. Okay, again, it's a version <laughs> written by peoples from a translation of another translation. And if you really want to fight and get nitpicky about every word that's in it, I'm going to need you to learn three languages. Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Mm -hmm. Because the original texts are in Greek and Hebrew, and Jesus spoke Aramaic. Mm -hmm. So already, out the gate, we got issues. It'd be like if I had one of you up here trying to speak right behind me in Spanish, your version of Spanish, because you both got different ones, <laughs> speaking in your Spanish, and I'm speaking in my English, and you're trying to keep up with me, and then we add Johnny trying to write it all down. You have to keep things in context. And you have to remember that there is historically something that's happening when this is going on that is not always going to make sense to us. We live in 2019. We ain't walking around back in the day where women were equated to goats, as Sherry pointed out. <laughs> And the truth, the truth that I need every single one of you to understand, that pastor 
whoever that pastor was, got it wrong. Mm -hmm. sure did. God didn't say men are better than women. That's right. That was a man's interpretation. Mm -hmm. God didn't say women can't. That was a man's interpretation mm -hmm. of what God said. That was the man's experience. That was through the man's eyeglasses. But what does it say? Jesus said, if you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you will experience for yourself the truth. And the truth will set you free. I want us to be free. I think it matters a lot. Because if you're not free and you're not living into who you're called to be, because of some other crappy theology that other people are feeding you mm -hmm. or that you're getting from turning on the wrong TV stations, yeah. you ain't going to live into who you're supposed to be. Mm. Because who you're supposed to be is directly linked to your experience of who holy is. I can't be Christy and live only off of my granny's interpretation of who holy is. Mm -hmm. I have to know for myself. And that's the truth. That's right. And if we start seeking our own truth. And we keep saying God please show me. Holy show me. Speak to my heart. Light me on fire. Make me who you want me to be. And if it means i got to walk away from every stupid argument somebody throws at me, well then help me do that. Because Christy's not good at walking away from them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know for myself. And I want to be free. And I want all of us to be free. And the only way we can be free is to continually say, God, show me your truth. Show me. Like it says here, I want to experience it for myself. I want to know you. I want to put all of my hope in you. I want the truth. I want you. And all the people said. Amen. Amen.